It is 12 o'clock. 12 noon in Vancouver, it is British 12 Columbia. 12 o'clock. That's me repeating. Coming back to ye in a feedback. Hi, everybody. Sydney here. <sighs> I haven't really wanted necessarily to do a video like this, but sometimes you got to do a video like this. Now, background, I guess. So, I don't like Facebook. I kind of wish I'd didn't have to use Facebook if the only reason I used I had fa if uh, oh, let's start this again if I used Facebook and the only reason I used Facebook was you know to do the messaging and the taking the pictures of breakfast and I'm gonna get this camera right and whatnot without having to move it okay with uh, and having you know if i just had facebook for what i really really use it for in terms of messaging i would honestly i would just de delete or deactivate my account but i have created and um and uh, am an administrator creator of several facebook groups some are dads some are shite, some are stupid, some are popular, and one in particular is the one I want to talk about today, review some of the comments and the various, mm, um, the various attitudes. Um, I grew up in a suburb of Cape Town on the slope slopes of Table Mountain and uh, here it is so I grew up waking up every morning looking up at that mountain pretty magnificent that mountain on each side there's a hill but on that so so it's kind of a bowl bowl effect but um, that mountain, on that mountain are residential areas, and they all and they they divide it into into separate names. Um, I should mention though that this is extremely a great picture. It's taken by Hilton Tepper. He's the uh, he's actually part of the group, and uh, I think all the pictures. Um, certainly, the ones that the one that I feature on the cover is taken by Hilton Tepper. Uh, I took it from it's, uh, Wikipedia, and I and I, and in fact, the um, the cover photo right now is from Wikipedia. So yeah, I go. I um. I just started at this particular point right now, just so you can get a, a, a quick view of the magnificence that we kind of grew up in nature-wise, okay? We all grew up here. Um, I'm going to start... Oh, yeah, I want to just... Yeah, John. John Feintook. He said it's been some time, but the last couple of days, one of memories have started to come back. Okay, the guy grew up there. Memories, awesome. No, no problem at all. Memories, beautiful. Who else is? Ah, yeah, John, still John. More memories, you know, uh, tall ships and stuff. Great. Reva, who remembers before they, you know, built the flyover? I remember. I was there. You know, I was. I, really young but Reva is obviously older than me now look Shifrit Jacobson I lived right across the street from Shifrit Jacobson there's a field let me um 
Let me go back to the actual feel. Let me show you something. Okay, this is the this is the um, picture from the snapshot from uh, Wikipedia uh, that Hilton took. Hilton Tepper. But anyway, if you look at this picture, you'll notice that there is. Uh, patches of green amongst the uh, the residential area. Okay, on the right hand side, on the top, one of these. Hold on a second. Let me just figure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, on the right hand side, on the top, there's there's the a green field. All right. It runs horizontally from left to right i lived on the very left hand on the very left hand uh, edge of the field i lived across the street and shifra lived right the house right adjacent to the field right so we were neighbors across the street we never said a word to each other she was a few years older than me and i was a shy little kid she obviously <laughs> realized that I was just a nothing. So anyway, everybody's having little cobweb. Look, oops. Hold on a second. I'm scrolling through here while. Uh... Okay, sorry about that. Reva, another cobweb memory. Da 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 da. Beautiful. And here's another picture by. By Hilton. Hilton Tepper. You'll notice that there's two those two uh, towers on the left hand side of the shot there. You'll also notice let me just show you. There's three towers on the left hand side. Those are called the Dyser Park Towers. They appeared one day, I mean, they started building, and they, they were an absolute eyesore. I, I remember, uh, I mean, they were great because they were, you know, residential, but they didn't seem to fit in with the character of the city, with the, they just sort of, they stuck out like a sore thumb. Never figured out how they came to be there, but um, I did ask a question in this, uh, in this, in this chat group. And I, and, I, and I think I got an answer. But anyway, I, I, I'm getting to a point. Because I don't want to run this show a little bit too long. Uh, so, yeah. Let's just scroll up here a little bit. See? Lots of people. Lots of people with memories. Remember some... some some place. Oh, here's another great shot by Hilton. This is a park that uh, was the plane. Used to have a guy that uh, looked after the place. Parky. <laughs> we called him Parky. <laughs> he was an elderly gentleman. He, he wore a cocky uniform. I guess he, he was the, the, the custodian or whatever. We were all scared of him. We all used to run away. I don't know why. Okay, so I'm getting to the point where it gets contentious. So on the 22nd of March, the um, the Facebook uh, uh, ordering is not right. You know the the dates. I'm trying to go by dates, but. Um, on the 22nd of March, I had recorded a review of this uh, Seidlanders movement uh, on here on YouTube, and I and I posted it in the um, in the Frida Hook group on the Facebook group because it's you know of interest to South Africa. It's and I also gave my opinion to uh, on 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 the views. Of these, uh, of these Afrikaners, of these Boer, of these crybabies. 
So anyway, I posted it. One guy, Sean McCulloch, McCulloch, he posted a couple of emojis there. I'm not too sure wh what he's getting at, but we'll, we'll, we'll get back to Sean. And that's on the 22nd of March. So you've got to keep, keep, uh, you've got to keep tabs with these dates here. 22nd of March. All right. 23rd of March, I posted um, another one. It's Human Rights Day in uh, South Africa. Uh, the the uh, ex land expropriation without compensation is becoming a hot topic in South Africa. And I'm, I'm very political, certainly have been uh, all my life. In South Africa, I had to shut the fuck up, but uh, since then, I, you know, I don't have to shut the fuck up, so I don't. Uh, anyway, I posted that on the 23rd of March. Mark Borzoni made a, made a, made a, made a remark. Oh, and, um, I, I, and I sense a little bit of hostility from him here, because he says, uh... Sydney Winston, the EFF is not relevant, but you and other media are giving them undue attention. I am not entertained. So Mark Barzoni is not entertained, number one. And number two, he's thinking that if I ignore the EFF, uh, if I ignore the EFF, then, you know, boom, that'll just all disappear. Goodbye, EFF. You're no longer, you're just no longer, boom, you're gone. Crazy. Anyway, that was on the 23rd of March. Like I said, the Facebook ordering is fucked. And then we welcomed a few more people. Charmaine posted a... Look at that nice picture of uh, Charmaine Putter. She posted this great picture of the cloud covering coming over Lion's Head. Very nice. That can only mean one thing. Strong wind. <coughs> Strong wind. I hated the wind. Ah, 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 ah. Look here. Look here. Another great picture by Hilton. In fact, I think this is the one that features in the. Uh, I think this is the one that features in the in the cover picture, but it's a, a sort of a wider view. And as you can tell, where all the residential areas are, and then there's a sort of a cutoff line where the where the mountain whew, mountain slope just sort of rises steeply. That's Table Mountain. Very nice. Very bloody nice. Oh, here. Yeah. So on the 24th of uh, March, I asked the question, does anyone know the real story behind the Dyserbach Towers? How come this it was allowed? You know, what was the what was the what was the the the, the path taken regulation-wise to get this thing approved? And I got some answers. Look. Um I got a few answers. John De Beer answered Derek Zinn answered fairly uh, well. Full details it contained in earlier comments, not too long back on the site. I couldn't really find them, but thank you, Derek. Wally, I, Wally answered. Uh, thank you, Wally. You know that was pretty decent, kind of a, a constructive uh, input. <coughs> and then this dude, Richard Zinn. Richard, I don't know wh why he says this, but he says, Richard Zinn, Richard Terence Zinn says, has this become a political site? I asked a question about Dyser Park Towers and has this become a political site? So you can tell that these people are not quite in tuned with reality. So these, are, these are angry South Africans. Very angry, angry people. Wow, you have no idea how angry South Africa is. And you'll see right now how angry and prejudiced. <laughs> oh, my God. Jumping to judgment? Not South Africa. <laughs> yes, South Africans. Anyway, 
You'll see. Uh, so Terence, uh, Richard Terence Zinn, Zinn says, has this become a political site for no reason other than I asked the question about Dyson Park Towers? <clears throat> okay, so that was on the 24th of March. Then on the 26th of March, I posted another uh, series of, of reviews and um, and uh, I don't know talks and speeches and whatnot on 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 on, fa on YouTube and I got absolutely no response. Okay, this is a twenty sixth. Okay, so now, thanks to our friends at e at Facebook who don't know how to don't have a clue about ordering, we're back on the twenty fourth of March, and I posted a question: Will this man be the next official leader of the opposition of the, in in next year's parliamentary elections? Is that is that not a not a decent is that not a decent uh, question to pro to, to pose? He is 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 a uh, opposition leader in the <coughs> in the government in the parliament, and he's a great speaker, and he's looks like he's set to rally the youth, the unemployed youth of the country, which is fifty percent something like that. Things could happen here. Um, so I posed that question and then Coral Becker for some reason says I never thought I'd see politicking here what are you talking about you never thought you'd see politicking you're ticking here is politicking some kind of a taboo subject now in Frida Hook huh or in South Africa no it's a free country. I live here. You know where I live? I live in a place where I can talk politics till the cows come home. You know what? No one has to listen to me. People can give me their uh, uh, their point of view. It's not a problem. But look at you guys. I never thought I'd see politics here. Mark Borzoni. Thumbs up. Mark Borzoni. We've seen. We've heard his name before. And then I type, I wrote there, you obviously don't live in North America, politics is everywhere, and no one is afraid to talk politics. And I also wrote there, I'm so glad I left South Africa when I did, because all, all this is what I feared back in the 70s, and now it's unfolding. Good luck to all of you living behind high walls, security bars, and with a security company on speed. Dial. Okay, so this is a little bit of our sort of a jump forward where I need to kind of go back. But um, South Africans don't have a sense of humor. They used to have a sense of humor like crazy. Like you wouldn't believe what a great sense of humor South Africans used to have. Now they fucking, they hut full of cuck. Look at this. I <laughs> I got a response to this. I'm so glad I left South Africa and I did. This is what this Julian Bird says. <laughs> I'm so glad you left too. <laughs> if you left the group, I'd be ecstatic. It's my fucking group. And then, who else? Let's see. I've got three. Come on. Doesn't it tell me who does what? Who does what? Come on. Tell me. Tell me. you got to tell me. How come this one tells me? Ah, so I got... Okay, there we go. Coral, Becker, Glenda, Marion, and Borzoni. Again. Yeah, yeah. They want me off the group. Remember these people. They want me off the group. And then I wrote <coughs> to Julian Birch. Julian Birch, it's because of grumpy cunts like you that we can't have fun in this group. You are... Welcome to leave anytime you desire. 
Anytime. Nobody thumbed that up. No. So Julian Birch replies, Grumpy? Me? You should go look in that mirror, dude. Okay. So I reply, Julian Birch, there you go. Listen up a bit. Relax. There was a time when our senses of humor were was all we had to keep it real in, 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 in Cape Town, in South Africa. And, you know, I get where they're coming from, sort of, you know, you know the, 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 the ambience, the, the environment was politics. No, because if you do talk politics, fucking Foster will get you. I, so I said, what happened to that unique trait Frida Hookers once had? That of pointing out and laughing at the absurd. Typo. Like all the tripe and nonsense spewed by that fuck Forster who was the head Nazi in charge in my day. The fuck Forster is the Prime Minister at the time who was a, a fuck and his name was Forster and he was head Nazi in charge of the police state that was South Africa in the 1970s when I lived there anyway. Okay. Cheryl, I don't know. Again, I I put a comment in here that uh, oh somebody said that that he or she was about to leave South Africa, and I made a comment, and it's kind of got stuck in here, totally in the wrong place. It's been moved because it it came up in the right place when I stuck it in there. Anyway. So Cheryl Fermani van der Merwe writes, Amazing how people that left South Africa always have the most to say and ironically know the most about what politically goes on here. So I replied, We know more about what went on in South Africa. Here, let me give you a taste. And I posted the speech, one of the speeches made by the fuck face Forster in 1976 of June, which which got me thinking, I got to go, you know, out of Aderci, out of this Cape Town or the South Africa place because I ain't going to fight for no Nazis army. Unlike you cunts, you Jews who went to fight, who went to fight for the Nazi Forster's army. So don't fucking come talk to me about anything. So, in the speech that Forster gave, he was a big puss. He was a big cunt to the black people. Threatening bastard. So, I commented... I am sure President Julius Malema will be a lot nicer to fellow South Africans than this asshole piece of shit Forster was to his fellow South Africans. Because Malema is saying, kick out the white farmers, expropriate the land, no compensation, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Extremist on the one hand, and ex- and the, uh, 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 the black extremist like Julius Malema, oh boy, everybody says, shut up, don't, don't you know, don't, 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 don't give him my platform, shut up, it's only 6%, they're scared, the white people, you white people, you're scared of Julius Malema, you're scared of the EFF, so I am going to give him a voice, why don't you speak out against the voice of Forster, there's a, there's a YouTube, there's a, a video of what he said in 1976, doesn't that, doesn't that, doesn't that move you at all, doesn't that, doesn't that um, stir up any any anger, any hatred, any anything? Well, for me, it does. For me, it did. And Maxine Tropper Margolis says, "This is such a happy group." And then Ivor, I know, I remember Ivor Kosovitz from from the hood. 
tell us okay tell us what is going on as we obviously don't know i'm not too sure what he's getting at i don't know if he's taking a dig at me or what he's doing there i don't know why he would be so again so south africans are really a little out of touch with themselves okay so let's just go down richard zinn answers no to my question highly unlikely okay now the here's this mark borzoni bozo again Max could not have said it better. Sydney Winston, have you ordered your you red beret? <laughs> have I ordered my red beret? So, because I am giving my point of view, um, I am prejudged to be a supporter of the policy of Ju Julius Malema. And I'm going to get to why he thinks that way in a minute and remember these dating sequences are a little bit out of whack so that's the 24th of March okay up we go and I think we're going to come to the one thing that triggered it oh yes baby okay yes this one on the 19th of March 19th I posted this I po firstly I went on I went and I went live like this and I made a YouTube I made a video and then once the video had processed I shared the video to the group with a little um, with a little note message and it, this is what I said isn't it about time that we started speaking not only about the beauty of nature that we grew up in but the horrors we witnessed of the Afrikaner state using apartheid as a tool for terrorizing its non-white population how were you traumatized by what you saw? Okay? How were you traumatized by what you saw? Now, I just want to... Uh, uh, what do I want to do yet? I want to take that question. How were you traumatized by what you saw? And I want to just... bring it in come on in question how are you traumatized by what you saw all right so remember that how are you traumatized by what you saw eddie says eddie Rousseau says okay so the question is how are you traumatized by what you saw so eddie says um, apartheid was absolutely abominable and a massive crime against humanity. However, it wasn't restricted to Afrikaners. Lots of whites from every segment of society, Christians, Jews, English, Afrikaners, etc., supported apartheid. The question is, how were you traumatized by what you saw? Eddie didn't see the question Eddie saw the question ignored the question I don't know Eddie didn't answer the question all right Ditty Ditty Asiach I think the question is how were you traumatized by what you saw and Ditty says the, that is an unspeakable crime and unfortunately society just went along with it. However, it did start with the Afrikaners and no one else. Apartheid is a Dutch word. Yes. The question though, Ditty, is how were you traumatized by what you saw? I responded, yes, the, yes. 
all the whites, that's, you know, everybody that's not non-white, took advantage of the Afrikaners tactics against the black community. And now the tides have turned. Why should the whites be especially protected now? Why? And Ditti says it's not really a wonder why so many rushed to leave South Africa after the government changed. There's not much left of a large and thriving Jewish community Cape Town once had. The question, though, Ditti, is how were you traumatized by what you saw during apartheid? And then we had another we have another uh, response by Ivor. Ivor Kostova says, Apartheid started by the British. It was formalized by the Afrikaners in 1948. Right, all right. True or not, I don't know. But the question, Ivor, is how were you traumatized by what you saw? That is the question. None of you have seen the question. And Ivor says, I left Cape Town in 1975. Yeah, you, you must have, because, yeah, well, I left in 19, pretty much February 1977. Then I was gone, so not much, not, you left much, not, not much longer before me. That, whatever. Sorry. So, Ditty. Ditty says, when we first moved to South Africa, we lived in Johannesburg. I was just a baby, my mom, 19 years old. My mom would greet, hello, the doorman in our building who was black. It took two days for the tenants to have an emergency meeting about it. They called her in to say that her human and decent ways are unaccountable. One simply does not speak, let alone greet, a black person. It was also said that the next time she does that, the police will be called as it is a criminal offense. I'm not a history expert, but this attitude is unique to Afrikaans. However, the future and change should be our focus, considering where South Africa was and where it now is is good. So, okay, that, in my opinion, bolsters my argument. Why should the whites be especially given, you know, be, a, be given especially, uh, you know, any privileges? So, I responded stop with the excuses already because nobody was answering the question how, what, how were you traumatized with what you saw nobody answered that stop with the excuses already the black prop population were treated harshly abused oppressed humiliated and dehumanized and we were there we were watched we watched as the daily brutality became real before our own eyes and I hate it the Afrikaner, the boor the gnats even the Afrikaans language yes, even that I hated so yes I fully understand the emotions of the ANC and EFF towards the whites we are all lumped into the same category in Malema's mind and that I understand. I understand. And then we get a response from Colleen Dittmer Kaplan. Sydney, I grew up in Friedehook and we hardly ever saw any black people. Only later, when they worked at the Jewish old aged home and caught the buses. Other than that, we never saw any, unless we went to Transvaal and went 
to watch the mine dance and the beautiful beadwork on the pavements. We all we were also brought up to respect all and everyone. So I don't know what you saw. I'm not even going to comment on that one. Because she carries on, Colleen Dittmer. Uh, Sydney, most of us thought like you did, as did our parents. Colleen, how exactly did I think? What was I, what exactly are you talking about? You're ignorant. You're a fucking ignorant idiot. You should know, Colleen goes on to say. You should know if you lived and voted in the area of Frida Hook, the Nats never came in. That's true. The United Party, or whatever they were called, were always the member of parliament. We didn't trust them. No shit. We hated them. We fucking hated the Afrikaans. Most people we knew didn't vote nat Nats. National Party. The, the Boo Party. And yet they couldn't be removed. No one was allowed to say anything or else you got deported. There was nothing anyone could do. I don't think anyone believed what we were told or read, but we had to go along with it. Same as the army. Fuck you, Colleen. You, didn't, you never had to go to the army. What the hell do you think? You're talking from a, a position of experience because you had to go to the army? Bullshit. Women were exempt from the army, so don't give me that. The only way was to leave the country, and it was only for people with money who could do so. I don't think the man in the street should be made to feel guilty like we are being now. Even the flag was an embarrassment to most English-speaking people. Thank you, Colleen. But that does not ask, answer the question by, uh, which is, how were you traumatized by what you saw? And I responded. I responded in kind. I said, Colleen, I said, Colleen, the point. <sighs> the point is that I understand the anger behind kill the boo. You know, that whole kill the boo, kill the boo, kill the boo. I understand it. I really do. To this day, I can still feel that hatred of the boo. As fresh as it was back in the 70s. Colleen. I don't know, Colleen. How do you... How do I, how do I get through to you? Because you did answer me. You did respond. Let's see what you say. Well... We all can too, and it's getting worse as it festers over time. If it were me and I was black, I would feel the same. However, with education should come some sort of understanding and that it was only some of the people that passed and carried out the laws and atrocities. Yes, Colleen, what did you do? Did you just stand back and not watch and not see? You just said before you never saw anything. <laughs> you got the Transvaal to see anything. You hardly saw any black people. Can you see, Colleen, how ridiculous you sound? Not all whites are to blame. The amount of whites killed to date has far outstanding exceeded the amount of blacks killed during the apartheid. During apartheid. The ANC is or was keeping it alive 
but must now educate the masses, not hold them back like they have been doing. They are so full of hate, which is also wrong even amongst themselves. A life doesn't seem to matter. A very sad and depressing state of affairs. Also, enough is enough already. But Colleen, the question is, how were you traumatized by what you saw? Excuse me, I'm getting a little bit carried away here. Oh, then Ditty Asiak says, response, After all, hate is not the answer, nor does it help change anything. Yes, it's true, but that's not the question. That's not the response to the question. How were you traumatized by what you saw? Maureen then responds. Maureen Bremner Owens responds. Mm, Friedhoek was a very happy place to live and grow up in, as Colleen stated. Was never a Nats area. <coughs> was never a nationalist party controlled area. We were brought up to respect all, regardless of color or creed. Let's not taint this page with politics. And then I responded, Maureen, you are being subjective. I also grew up in Frieda Hook. In Frieda Hook, there was a small community of Afrikaners. Frieda Hook was not such a happy place for everybody. Did you grow up being hated on for being a Jew? Even though I was as atheist and secular then as I am now? Nope. My guess is that you didn't. What? this thread is about is the farthest thing from politics. Is about, it is about life in South Africa for most people while you were in your happy place in Friedhoek. I don't think I phrased that very well. didn't come through. Anyway, she replies, you know, soldier on, Maureen. Sad that you feel that way. Sad that I feel that way after apartheid. Glad I was brought up to love, respect all. Like I wasn't. Never in our home did I ever hear racial or anti-Semitism comments. A lot of my friends are Jewish, Catholic, and Afrikaans. And I can honestly say we all treat each other with respect. None of her friends are black. Have you noticed that? None. She says so. Unless her, she got black Jewish, black Catholic, and black Afrikaans friends, which I don't think. Growing up, my Jewish girlfriends stayed over at my home and vice versa. Yay! And our parents were good house friends as well. Maybe I was just very lucky to have been in my happy place in Friedehoek. Now, here comes Mark Barol's the barging bozo Borzoni reminder. Your posts and comments are intended for entertainment and social interaction purposes only. Sydney, Winston, please do not kill this forum. I'm not entertained. Maureen. Touche. And I responded to Mark. I said, Mark Borzoni, please don't tell others what to do. Do you not understand what social interaction is, Mark? It's what we are doing. I have not blamed anyone for anything other than pointing out how much of a police state we lived in at the time. And that's true, we did. If you can't handle small doses of reality from time to time, perhaps <clears throat> you would be best advised to just read and then think before presenting us with a mere knee-jerk cookie-cutter reaction. Ha! 
I think I pushed a button there. I think I pushed a button because he says, Hi, sorry, but the reminder is your own words that you pinned in 2013. I seriously do not want to discuss the past as it was tough. National service was no walk in the park for me. The reality is that I still live in Friedehook and you don't. I'm glad that we now have a great multicultural society instead of the scummy government workers that infested Friedhook in the 80s because of the generous housing subsidies. What the fuck are you talking about? Mark Borzoni. I don't have a fucking clue. But the question is, how are you traumatized by what you saw? No answer yet. I responded to Mark. I said, Mark Borzoni, if you are averse to talking about the past, then perhaps this group oops, is not a good fit for you. And Coral Becker, Mark Bazzoni, re responds to Mark Bazzoni's remark about the scummy government work is, wow. And Sean pops in, Mark Bazzoni, hi Mark, greetings from an old neighbor. And now it gets interesting. Remember, the question is, how were you traumatized by what you saw? Simeon Alexander Watson Stock writes, Sounds like your formative years made you a very unhappy person, Sidney Winston. Where is it that you live currently? I responded to Simeon Alexander Watson. Stock. 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 And I said, To Shay Apartheid and its enablers, that is, us white folk, set the scene for today's reality on the ground. And along the way, fucked up the formative years of some of us. I chose to leave rather than perpetuate B.J. Forrester's crimes against humanity. Unlike some guy who had to do national service. <laughs> so, Simeon Alexander Watson Stock said, responds, Us white folk must speak for ourselves, but I am sure that in staying, very many of us did not perpetuate crimes against humanity. From a place of comfort, your rhetoric comes easy. I'm in Canada, right? Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Simeon. I will try. Then we have a new introduction. Sharon Thompson Grunewald. Seriously, Advin Admin. That's me, she says. Why discuss this topic on a platform meant for us to reminisce about our youth growing up in Friedehook? Mostly happy and fun memories are discussed and shared here. Lost friends reunited. Don't burden us with an unhappy past. That you ran from. My parents taught us that we were no different from anyone else. And that, and always refer to my group of friends as a League of Nations. We may have had the privilege of growing up in Friedehook and Highlands. But for most of us, there were happy memories. You see? Sharon Thompson Hunewald. Fuck you. I can have my own memories. Thank you very much. So I responded to Sharon Thompson Grunewald. I said, reminder, the Nats, the National Party, are no longer in power. These days, we are allowed to talk politics to all of you with only 
fun memories of Frida Hook during apartheid. Great, good for you. Now shut the fuck up and let the rest of us have our say. <clears throat> Which... elicited a response from Derek Zinn. Derek Zinn. Let's see what he's got to say, old Derek Zinn. <laughs> Why take your personal hang-ups and clearly demonstrated bad attitude on I grew up in Frieda Hook's site? There are many other places that you can vent your frustrations. Okay, I grew up in Frieda Hook and I'm frustrated. I'm venting my frustrations about growing up in Frieda Hook. So, uh, Derek Zinn. Where? What are you talking about? There are many other places that can vent your frustrations. I'm doing it right here. Why not? Besides, you never answered my questions. How are you traumatized by what you saw? So, he continues. You come across as one that may be physiologically challenged through past events and may well need professional help. Separate development affected all sectors of the population. That is why there was a referendum to vote for change to a democracy. This is detailed in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa Act 108 of 1996. If you have not as yet, please read it. <laughs> we all want to move forward for a better South Africa for all who live here. The past is what has occurred and a lesson never to happen again. The present is how we live to those changes. The future is the way forward for one united country. Ra 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 ra. To which I responded, Derek Zinn, you produce shitty rhetoric. Try putting some thought into your scribbling. And then Derek Zinn says to you maybe with your gutter language. Who put an angry? Who put an angry at my? It's taking a while to load. Why? I don't care. To you, maybe with your. Oh, come on, man. Ah, now this guy, Dave Sproston. Sydney Winston, I totally agree with you. This idiot, no clue. This idiot has no clue what it's about, and he's obviously a sick. And then comes another response from Dave Sproston, same guy, all in caps, in uppercase. So he's screaming. Derek! Ignore the idiot! He needs to take his medication! <laughs> and then Richard Terenceson writes, A true rainbow is what I looked forward to. But sadly, it can turn to grey. At the time we grew up in Freedom, we never realized how lucky we were. It is a very special place in my heart with lovely memories. And then Dave Sproston. Wow, Sydney. Did you take your medication today? Because your remarks are of a bitter, sick person and I truly believe you should not belong to our group. Our group. Our group. Dave Sproston lives in London, United Kingdom. 
I shouldn't belong to his group because I'm my remarks are of a bitter sick person. It continues. It continues. This goes on for a while. All right. So what did I say? Dave Sprost and shut up already, you annoying little man. Sydney Winston, oh, Dave Sproston. Sydney Winston, shame, caught out, idiot. Sydney Winston, which is me, I say, Dave Sproston, that's it. I am telling Honorable Malema to expropriate your land first. No compensation for you. I didn't actually realize he, was lived, in, he, was, he lived in London at the time. I just thought now, but part of the joke. And then I said, Dave Sproston, you should have taken Sean McCulloch's advice, referring to something I, somewhere else. Oh, so I said, no compensation for you. So Dave Sproston replies, wow, frightening. Like, no compensation for paintings and money? Again, I refer you to, whoops, right there. Look what it says. How are you, how are you traumatized by what you saw? No, everybody's ignored it so far. Dave Sproston, you are... Oh, and then I put him in timeout. And he left. Funny. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. I don't even know what the hell timeout is. So, this is basically what I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, this is what started it all. It was essentially a question. How are you traumatized by what you saw and what followed was this gunk this bullshit diatribe of nonsense and uh and what can i say liberal bullshit mm. now for the record i will say that i am conservative i lean conservative economically not socially I also posted more, more YouTubes about this, the um, positions in South Africa, history. No one responded. No one responded. I don't think anyone, any, anyone watched it because I remember someone put a comment, something like, "Oh, Sydney Winston, if I see a, if I see a." a post or video from Sydney Winston, I just immediately ignore it, delete it, whatever. So it looks like that's what's happened. And let me go up a bit, see what, oh yeah, let's see, see some just regular people with regular memories, memories. I asked about the, uh, the water situation in Cape Town for those living there in Freedom with the water situation. A couple of comments. You know, very little engagement. Hardly. No engagement. But when I put up something political, which we should be talking about, pow, I should I should be kicked out of the group. Look, I did a, I did a sequel. I don't think anyone watched it. I don't think anyone watched it. Okay. This is what I wanted to also talk about. Colin Lamborn. He says, "I grew up in the I grew up in Freedok is the topic." Okay. Um this site has now changed to pure politics, which is what I read about on 100 other sites. Admin, you should create a different site, free to hook a political debate for those wanting to get involved. Well, Colin Lamborn, this is a, called I Grew Up in Frito Cape Town. We can talk politics in here. We are quite free to talk politics in here. If you would like to create a group called free to hook political debate by all means you go ahead and do so yourself I'm not interested
But because of the silly comments that really did follow, I, I think I, I, I'm, I was going to end this one, but I'm, I'm going to take this thread and walk with it. Because I replied, a admin, me, does not take orders from members. You may speak about whatever you like. I like to speak about politics. Colin replies, Yes, sir, President Winston, it was a suggestion, not an order. You have kicked the suggestion into touch, so you win some and you lose some suggestions. Coral Becker writes back, There are so very many places one can talk about politics, and so few which talk about Frida Hook. <laughs> you touch a chord in my heart, Coral. And then she says, I like speaking about psychology and spirituality. Is that cool with everyone? And guess what? Two people said, thumbs up. Me and Joanne Ellett, who will make her appearance soon. And then uh, somebody with no brain named Rene Gerber. I, I think the site has been hijacked. <laughs> with the com okay now I, I do get some support Glynis Roy Robertson offers me a little support here she says admin should be able to do whatever it wants and if most people are unhappy, then there are three options. Leave the site and start another one. Don't allow politics on this particular one. Or get rid of the offending person. Simple. And Mark Borzoni says, if admin does not like your opinion, then he will delete your post. Not quite true. Uh, with Mark Borzoni's case, um, he he put up a poll, and I I a silly poll which I deleted, which I hid, and then thought about it, and then unhid. I and I and I I participated in the poll, silly stupid poll. But if why would I hide? Why would I want to hide or delete Mark Borzoni's stupidity? Not gonna happen. So Paddy Gaffney then responds. I agree. So sick of that shit. Admin, please add a no politics and guilt dumping policy on this page. No. I read that wrong. Admin, please add a no politics and guilt dumping policy on this page. Cheers, all. Then I responded, Politics is encouraged here. It was never off limits. Coral Becker. She says, Pity you can't block admin. Hardy, 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 hardy. And let's see. She got some support. A couple of people. Lo one loved it. One liked it. Now you block admin. And then Rene Gerber, remember, she's the one with no brain. The hijacker is Admin! Hardy, hardy, hardy. Oh, 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 oh. Lots of laughs. Paddy Gaffney says, Cuck funny, cuck funny. Just remember, I grew up in Puff Adder, lol. Thanks, Rene. So, let's carry on. Mark Borrone. Mark Borrone says, Politics is encouraged, but restricted. If Sidney Winston, the owner and admin, does not like your post, he will delete it. The group should be called Canadian <laughs> Nazis that used to live in Freedom in the 70s. Well, it's funny. That's very fucking funny. Uh, I can't. Uh, yeah. Okay, Mark. That was a good one. 
And then Veronica Wisniewski, play nicely now, Sydney Winston, and the rest of you. And she says, create a poll. Uh, that was the poll that I think Mark was referring to, which is which is on this uh, which is on in this group. If if you go to Facebook, that's a public group, as you can see there. You can you can probably follow all this along. So Carlos, now Carlos Steves is a a young lad that I went to school with. He was maybe a uh, a grade below me, I think. So the young lad that I went to school with is now, like me, an old wise man. He writes, Hey people, there is enough shit going on around the world now. Let's all be nice to each other and talk about positive issues. We can't change the past, but we can certainly change the future. Let's be role models to the younger generation. Just say it. Okay, Colleen Dittmer Kaplan writes, I am so happy to finally hear how Malema's roots are not in South Africa as are most of his cronies. What the fuck is she actually responding to? Because I have no idea. Joanne, thank you, my dear. Let's see if I can... Joanne, look at the angel. Look at that. She says, I think she's, I think she's an ally. She says, isn't it, isn't it refreshing that people are able to discuss political issues affecting their suburbs? Worry about and complain when you are forbidden to do so. In the meantime, enjoy freedom of expression. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Maxi Lancaster Wood Hookham writes, Sydney Winston, you need a lovely and enjoyable life, man. <laughs> it's sad. That, it's sad that when I... S ah, this is the one who said that. It's sad that when I see your name, I skip right past your post. Just try to enjoy something. Have a super day, eh? So I write back, thank you, sweetie. She writes back, a pleasure, lovey. And then Joanne says. Joanne, Joanne says. Why doesn't this go down? Oh, it's just really slow. Fucking Facebook. Like I said, I wish I didn't have to use stupid Facebook. I am baffled by the animosity, animosity that Sydney is receiving in this forum. I urge you all to consider the implications of what is said. One never knows to what extent these comments can have on an it individual <laughs> but my feelings I wrote Joanne Ellett thank you I'm beginning to hate white people mm. look at this animosity I'm getting from white people all in my own chat room and then Joanne such a nice lady responds hatred is one of the most easiest of human emotions to evoke in others and is the most destructive. Its effects can be felt for hundreds of years and has contaminated civilizations uh, since time immemorial. I am not calling for love or positivity, but I am happy to encourage a deeper understanding of human nature even with all its warts. Joanne, lovely. Totally out of context, but lovely. And Maxie says, maybe the two of you 
can have weekly get-togethers. I think you'd both enjoy it. You know, I think so too. A weekly get-together. I'd enjoy it. Mm. Joanne says, My family and I would spoil him rotten if he visited us here in Australia. Just saying. Really. Well, I think I'm overdue for being spoiled rotten. However, uh, we have a problem in uh, geography. Because I live in Canada, and live in Vancouver, and, well, um, my, my country spoils me rotten, my province spoils me rotten, my city spoils me rotten, my, my strata council spoils me rotten. <laughs> but if I ever visit Australia, I'm ready to be spoiled rotten again. Australian way. Okay, so Maxi Lancaster Wood Hookham says, Go girl, invite him. Will be good for him. And it, it, it will be good for him. I mean, why not? Not that I like to travel. <clears throat> I'm more of a homebody. So if I did go to Australia, I'd probably be more of a hassle than a... Ha the, 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 yeah. I'd, I'd... I don't know. Travel? I'm quite happy... Quite here, right here in my studio. I can see the world from my studio. Um, so, Marion McLaughlin says, Joanne, please do. In other words, invite me. That may keep him off this group. And be extra nice. Hope he becomes a nicer person after that, because I am not a nice person now. Get it? Actually, I am. Oh, Sean, 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 Sean's back. He types, he jumps in. Time to jump ship and let the captain rave at the waves. The boy with the waves. Got the captain of the ship and I'm raving at the waves. Well, go. Go, fuck's sake. But, 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 Joanne says, my personal observation is that this group lacked patronage by its members prior to Sydney's politically charged posts. And I kind of remarked on that. Everything else. But Barbara Bretherton has the final say. I do agree with Colin Lamborn. Was I grew up in Friedhoek group not created for those special memories of our childhood. More especially for those of us that have stuck by our country through all this turmoil? Do we need all the political nonsense? No! I don't think so! Well, Barbara. Barbara, baby. You know what? You are wrong. You knew, Dean. You do need this bullshit. This political nonsense. Because it's free. It's a free country you live in. It's a free country I live in. It's a free internet. Yes, you can change the past. But just as you can change the past, you can't change the trauma that the past has caused to you and me in the present. And having said all that, I would just like to say Thank you for watching. An hour and 15 minutes is not a short amount of time. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet, please like this video and share it with your friends. Thank you again and stay tuned because there will be another contentious video coming up soon.